my beautiful bookish friends and welcome back to my channel so it is the end of august which means it is time for a reading wrap-up uh i decided i'm gonna go back to my old style of wrap-ups where i just do everything all together you guys seem to like that a lot more than when i break it up into different segments now that's not to say that i won't pop in at some point and have more books because it's only the 24th and i feel like i have a lot more to read uh but I have also read nine books and I can feel myself stalling out. So I want to talk about them and have it all done in case I don't read any more that I'm not scrambling at the end of the month. So getting it started, the first book I read actually wasn't on my TBR at all. Uh, I read Desperate Measures by Katie Roberts. This is one of the um, adult romances that is dealing with a character from a Disney film and kind of twist it so this story was jasmine and jafar and it was set in a much more like modern day agraba where i would compare it to the way that the you know it was set up would probably be more like like dubai like modern day dubai like everything's very technological and there's like some business dealings that happen um but this book I thought, and maybe this is just, I did not realize this um, until later, there's not a whole lot of plot to this book. It's a lot of smut, that's all you're getting for the most part. And there was a little bit of plot, but it was so instant lovey and so just like accepting of the new circumstance that I wasn't, like I didn't believe it, if that makes sense. And maybe it's just because in my brain, Jasmine is, you know jasmine from the disney movie and she just wouldn't accept these circumstances so that was the one of my biggest problems with it um other than that it was it was okay i listened to it on audio uh because hoopla has all of katie roberts books um at least in the wicked villain series on there for free so you can either listen to them or i think they also have ebooks too so i ended up giving it a two out of five stars and i think Really, the only thing that saved it was the atmosphere for me. So, yeah, two out of five stars on Desperate Measures. I don't know that I'll read more of the Wicked Villains. I think I'll kind of wait and see how I feel about them moving forward. If I just need like a quick read that I just kind of want to be mindless about, then I'll go with one of those books. Next book I actually read physically and on audio, um, and I'll show you why here. I read Sidner by Marissa Mayer. This was part of my TBR for my Enneagram a thon uh, that I participated in that I completely like forgot about and forgot to enter my data into but oops but I read Sinner I this is the first like urban fantasy sci-fi that I've read that I've actually enjoyed I'm not a sci-fi fan but I really really like this book and maybe because it is a Cinderella retelling I could kind of root into different uh parts that made sense to me or that kind of you know made me think of the other story so it wasn't so sci-fi uh, but this one I don't think was out of the realm of belief, especially because this one focuses on like a plague. I know, how fitting. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this book. Uh, Cinder is Cinderella and she is missing a leg. So she's an android and androids are seen as like the scum of the earth kind of. And there's planet uh interplanetary politics and her and the prince are trying to basically stop this plan to overthrow their government but this starts a whole series this is all part of the lunar chronicles and it all takes place in new beijing so it's in china but a very different china than what you would think of uh and the romance in here was really well done I don't think it overpowered the story at all and this is actually one of my most surprising books of the year and I gave it five stars. So I haven't been giving out a whole lot of five stars but this book really for me was was awesome. Uh, however I do have to uh, potentially get rid of this copy uh, or something because somewhere in here I think it's between chapter 24 and 30, I think. At some point, there's literally just 74 pages missing. Yeah, there it is. So chapter 24, uh, this page doesn't have a page number on it. Okay, 
217, so this would be page 216. And you go one, two, so to page 220, and suddenly we're on chapter 30. And listening to the audiobook, when I got to this part, I realized that it literally skips all those pages. So make sure you check your copies if you get this. I got mine from Barnes & Noble. So then I read The Tale of Despero. This is a children's book that I have had for a really long time and never ended up reading it. Um, I mean, it's got these deckled edges too, so it's really cute looking. I had seen the movie when it came out in like 2005 and I, I don't remember a lot of it. Um, so I wanted to read the book and see if it reminded me of anything. It ultimately did not. I remember the animation style, but I didn't remember it being this weird and disturbing even for a kid's book. I would say it kind of runs along the grim fairy tales kind of storyline. Um, or like, you know, general feeling. I didn't love this book. I gave it two stars. I just felt like there was way, way too much going on for me to really sink my teeth into any one storyline or care. Um, and it just seemed like, I don't know, it didn't read like a kid's book. Uh, and I know it's like, probably like maybe a middle grade. Uh, but even so, it still felt really young for middle grade because there's like pictures and it's only 271 pages and like it kind of it reads like that so yeah I it's all about a little mouse named Despero and basically he's the only one of his litter to live but he wants to be more of a human than a mouse he has really big ears he doesn't it's almost like a ratatouille-esque storyline he's a mouse who doesn't want to be a mouse uh so yeah it was okay uh, and I don't know that I'm gonna hang on to it just because I didn't enjoy it that much. I don't think I'll read it again. So next we have another disappointing book and I'm so upset that this was a disappointment because I really hoped I would like it. It's Black Widow Forever Red. Um, these are like the Marvel novels. So this one is by Margaret Stoll and it came out in 2016 and maybe that's why I feel a certain type of way about it because I've watched all the Marvel films um to me this just felt like we weren't I wasn't reading about Black Widow the character seemed really off like I think we know so much about Natasha from the movies and maybe if you're not a Marvel movie watcher you would enjoy this book I definitely think that's part of it she was just really cold and emotionless for a lot of it and it took us down a storyline that it has nothing to do with the movie um, the Black Widow movie and maybe that's part of it too is that I was expecting it to kind of lead us down the line of the movie but it was different um but this is basically like Natasha finds out that there's a girl that she saved a long time ago from the guy who established the Red Room where she trained and the girl has now been struggling and basically she's kind of like Natasha's little sister without being her real sister uh so you know she gets herself into some trouble Natasha's trying to get her out of it there's a boy involved and you're kind of trying to figure out where he fits into all of it so it's it's very interesting it's very action-packed it's got a lot of you know the Marvel things you love like Coulson's in this book uh Tony Stark is in this book but to me it just didn't read like Scarlett Johansson as Black Widow and like I said I think the movies had a lot to it like skewing my perception of her in the book but also she was written very dry and I think that's such an old way of thinking of Natasha like we know she has a lot of emotion and she's very committed to things and in this she seemed very just like dry and wishy-washy so I gave this two stars and I'm not sure that I'll continue on to the second book um it is at the library so if nothing else I will borrow it just to see what happens so next I read a horror and this is actually the last book in a duology. This is The Suffering by Rain Chepeco and this is the second book in the Girl from the Well series. I loved this book and I can't tell you too much about it because if I did then I'm gonna ruin The Girl from the Well. Um, but this basically continues our story. We're following our same spirit. Um, who, oh, Okiku. Yeah. So we're following Okiku and we're following Tark and they're kind of you know, they're buddies and they're gonna 
do what Okiko needs to do, like her mission in life. This one I think had a lot more of a tight story. It talks about the suicide forest in Japan. Nothing graphic or anything, but a lot of the story takes place there. And then of course with Okiku, there are some like pretty gory horror scenes because this is horror. Uh, so just be aware of that going into this. But I thought it was amazing. People get lost. They have to try and find them. I think there was a movie like that that came out a while ago uh, where a guy was going into the suicide forest to find his sister who had went missing in there. Uh, but this is like a group of ghost hunters goes missing in there with one of their friends and they have to go find them. And Okiku is obviously going to help them uh, with the spirits. But this is a really cool folklore story in it, just like the last one. And I gave this five out of five. So, you know, maybe horror is for me as long as it's in books. Who knows? So clearly I was trying to treat myself this month because I read Rinch Pekka, which is one of my favorite authors. And I also read Fable by Adrian Young, who is also one of my favorite authors. And oh my God, when I tell you this book was so, 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 so good. I read it physically and listened to it because I needed to know what happened. I could not like put it down. Literally, I had to keep reading. This was so good. It is about Fable who is left on an island by her father because he's a little bit crazy. Um, but he's also like this master manipulator traitor. And she basically gets off the island and after surviving there by herself for so many years and she like is going to go find him and see why he left her there her mother has passed away um in a shipwreck she's going to claim her inheritance like all of these things are going on but you also have just an amazing pirate story with a little bit of romance peppered in there of course because it is adrian young but i feel like it was done in the same way as sky in the deep where the romance was just like a nice little icing on the already incredible cake or you know the glass of milk with the warm cookies like it was just so so good I mean it was a Reese Witherspoon book club pick Reese has good taste um but there was so much cool adventure and Adrian Young has an amazing way of writing atmospheres like her world building is incredible because I could see in my brain all the places we were going, all of the little, you know, nooks and crannies that she was hiding in. This book was so good. Five out of five, a favorite of the year. And I can't wait to get namesake to complete the duology. Then we have one of the biggest books of the year that people have been talking about. I read Lore by Alexandra Bracken. This is a mythology retelling about the Argos. It's a poem where it talks about Zeus punishing the gods for trying to overthrow him and sending them to earth once a year for seven days so they can be hunted and if a human or someone else I don't think it has to be a human kills them they take on their godly power and they become the new you know Aphrodite Athena Apollo whoever so this is all about a girl named Lore and she is living in New York when all of this is happening and somehow she is entangled in all of it. People from her past show up and she thinks they're dead, but clearly they're not. And they are going on this amazing adventure. It is a chunky book, but it was so well done pace wise that I didn't even realize how long the book was. Um, there's a lot of Greek mythology in here, but it's not done in a way that if you have no prior knowledge of Greek mythology that you would be confused it's very well done like that and also it's so pretty i got mine at barnes and noble um i don't know if this is a special edition or not uh but it's broken into three parts and it's just an amazing story athena is in this there is a lot of twists and turns and pol not i wouldn't say political because it's not really political but there's a lot of drama amongst the people there's complicated relationships there's who can you trust who can you not as well as like magic and powers so it's a really fun fantasy it's all set in new york so it's an urban fantasy i loved it the settings were amazing i could see in my head where she was talking about when all these things happen that the gods are causing so it was a pretty awesome book there's also rep in here there is a male male relationship in here and it's adorable Next, we have one of my most anticipated books I've had on my TBR for much, much, much too long. 
Serpent and Dove. Wow, this book is so long, but I read it in like two days. I I did listen to it on audio because we were coming back from Chicago when I was reading it, um, but I could not turn it off. It was so good. And I ended up reading kind of the last couple chapters physically. Um, this is all about Lou. She's a thief. She is a witch. And she lives in France where witches are being burned at the stake like every other day. And somehow, by circumstance, she ends up having to marry a witch hunter. And it's so good. People were saying that one of the reviews I heard is like a lot of the characters are really dumb except her. I didn't get that. I didn't get that vibe. Maybe it's just certain instances. Um, I definitely didn't guess some of the twists and turns. I thought I did. I did not. Uh, but this is the first book in the series. So there is another witch coming after Lou and she basically has to hide from her and it's all just so much goodness and there's a lot of political intrigue there's some religious stuff in here too that if you have like religious trauma it definitely uh could potentially trigger so be careful with that however this book was amazing it's 513 pages it's a long one so blood and honey better be good um, I gave this five stars as well. So I guess it was a good month for five stars. And Lore, I gave four stars. Just because a couple of the, I felt like the book maybe could have been broken up into a duology. Uh, but other than that, yeah, five stars. The last one I have is a mystery thriller. And this is from a couple of TBRs ago, but it's Two Truths and a Lie by Sarah Shepard. This book is so quick. I listened to it all last night. Um, it's more in the Lion Game series and we're just building on the story and weeding out suspects or are we? Maybe we're adding some people back to our suspect list. Uh, but yeah, this is all about Emma who's taking over her dead twin sister Sutton's life. She's being blackmailed into doing it and we gotta figure out who the killer is. That's it. That's all I can tell you about that one. So that's all I have for now. I am currently reading The Ravens, which I do want to finish. So if nothing else, that's it for now. Uh, or maybe that's it for the month. So if you see my outro screen after this, please subscribe, like, let me know what you're reading. Uh, and if not, I'll have more books to wrap up. I actually did end up reading a little bit more at the end of the month of August. So I want to pop these three books in here that I ended up reading. Uh, I finished Hide and Seek, which was the fourth book in the Lion Game series. I decided why not might as well listen to it I had finished the third one so quickly and kind of left me in a spot where I really wanted to know what happened next and got me re-excited for the rest of the series so uh this one I gave three stars it was pretty neutral um I can't give anything away about it then I read primer which is a graphic novel I actually read this as like a ebook uh, and I'm really glad I did because it's definitely a graphic novel for younger kids, but it was really cute. It's about a foster girl who gets new foster parents and the one is a scientist and she's working on this government project where they're making this body paint that gives you superpowers and she gets into it. So it's a really cute story um, all about like her as a foster kid and making friends and finally being in a stable foster that wants her to stick around for a long time. So I gave that one four out of five stars. And finally, the only book I have given one star this year, The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. I was so incredibly disappointed by this book. I wanted to like it so bad, especially because I love the cover, but I, I have to unhaul this book. There's no way I'm going to reread it. I hated almost everything about this the characters i did not feel sympathy for i was so sick of the main girl alice by the end of the book i didn't care what happened to her i didn't care if they found her mom because this is all about a girl who has this kind of elusive one hit wonder author grandmother who was very secluded and come to find out the fairy tales she wrote are all true and now those fairy tale characters are coming after this girl so you know in theory it's a cool concept but i didn't care about her after page like 40 i hated that they made her have anger issues and she just would like explode at the littlest of things and you know a few times it was okay but it happened so often 
or she was like, I could feel myself getting pissed off. I could feel myself getting pissed off. I was like, I, I don't care anymore. You're always angry, it seems. So, yeah. One star. Did not like it. Not for me. So that's it for all the books I read in August. Thanks for sticking through this video. I know it was kind of a long one, and I'll see you in September.